if the squeaky wheel gets the oil, if the employee does yeah. not say something, then nothing happens. And that's what they're saying. Welcome to our podcast. It's about payroll. We're your hosts, Brian Escobar and Walter William Duncan III. Whether you're new to the payroll game or a seasoned veteran, we have something for you. Welcome back, folks. This is episode 130. Oof. And 100, 141, <laughs> and 41 of it's about your paycheck. We're still in a place where we're doing two at one. It's it may yeah. it, it may and will break up before we get into the rest of the show. What's up, Walt? How you doing today, sir? Man, I'm good. Got my blue from Lingo shirt on, so yeah, tropical. <laughs> I'm in a tropical state of mind. How about you, man? Oh, I love it. Yeah, I love it. And, uh, I always. Love the shirt when you wear the shirt. But like, oh, no doubt, he's feeling yeah, it today. Yeah, he's but... chilling. I'm good, man. I'm good. Thank God. It's it, I, like I just said. Hey, we gotta be efficient. The Yankees are playing. The Giants are playing. I'm freaking out. New York sports wise. The, you know, what, but the it's New fun. York Liberty won the so I haven't NBA. Got, did they? Yeah. Oh, amazing. The first. Yeah. See, amazing. See, amazing. I'm loving sports right now. I haven't gotten into the WNBA yet. Mm, Caitlin Clark definitely. I was already aware of it, so she didn't even put WA on the map for me. But mm-hmm. I'm like, it definitely. Oh wow, they still are doing a thing. Don't doubt. Definitely and, good players, man. Yeah, and so now I players. definitely want to watch more. And she's blowing it up right now, currently with the deal that she's going overseas. Mm-hmm. And I'm not mad at her, man. I saw one of the posts about what she's going through in the league, and I was like, go get your money, girl. What do you think <laughs> about that? You're a basketball. You, I think you're more of a basketball fan than I. What do you think well, about the whole Caitlin Clark situation? I think she's a great player. I think a lot of players felt some kind of way because she was coming in and like they were, they were announcing her like the next great one in the game and stuff like that. And she was like bringing like lots of ratings, lots of viewership yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. And so I think it was good for the game. It brought more, agreed, more money. More money. I yeah, think agreed. the WNBA could bring in even more money for their yeah, growth compared to their male counterparts. Yep. yep. They're like they're grossly underpaid. And they they've been playing some good games, man. Like that finals. So the WNBA was great. We got to do sports pay. Yeah. Or, uh, sports pay. And, and because this is another great example of not a great example, unfortunately, but another example of how women are underpaid. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get popularity, but come on. We could yeah. make, we could definitely. I'm glad it's still going and it's still growing. So that's cool. Yeah. yeah man. Angel no Reese, her, all those different players. Yeah. No, I hate you. See, that's cool. Yeah, man. All right, bro. You want to start us off? We got pay news coming up. Yeah, I do. I have a quick article from calmatters.org, and it talks about when employers steal wages from workers. So it's an article from 2022, and it just gives some stats and stuff like that about how employers may deny over overtime premiums and ask employees to work off the clock and or take their tips there's a stat on here that said back in 2015 that in california workers nearly lost nearly two billion dollars from not being paid minimum wage this is 2015 you know what i'm saying the whole state or the whole state okay that i get the whole state california yep in california because california has the most w2 employees so that makes sense yep wow i said that most of the victims of the de- uh, wage theft were often women, immigrants, and people of color. You see what I'm saying? We're just talking about oh my many, God. many in restaurants, construction, hotels, car washes, blue collar, um, garment businesses, farms, yep. warehouses, and nail yep. salons. Yep, front line yep. labor, like for, front line workers. Yep, blue collar. And, yep. And one, there was a one lighter on here that I found interesting, and it teed me off a little bit. It said that usually no one goes to jail for the death, for stealing from the, the wages. The from OT the stealing, right? Yeah. Be- who we would? Who was I just saying this to? I was telling somebody recently. We build these things because they're like insurance, right? Some mm-hmm. of the things are if nobody ever, if a, if the squeaky wheel gets the oil, if the employee does yeah. not say something, then nothing happens, and that's what they're saying. And, and look for me. If the shoe was on the other foot and the employee was the one that was stealing from the employer. Oh, 
You're going yeah, to immediately. You want to charge him. You want to yeah, arrest you're going him. going to jail. Go to jail. Fired. So I, I just find that interesting dynamic that the employer can steal from the employee. And but it's a, it, oh my gosh. And it should get us angry. It should get everybody out there that gets a check angry. Even if, thank God, if your company doesn't do it to you. But think about it. Employee, right? We, it, I'm not so much, oh, it has to be a union situation, mm -hmm. but everybody that is an employee, a W-2 employee, has something in common as far as employee rights. Mm -hmm. And that these things should be uni like, hey, let's all make sure that we, because, oh my gosh, imagine if all employees were speaking up about things like this. Mm -hmm. See, and that's why California is aggressive. It justifies their aggressiveness, their employee, how would we say, employee friendly. Centric, yeah. Employee centric. Yeah, I can't yeah. think of the word. And, Thank you. And then before I p pass you the baton, I just want to read off some, some of the things that they consider wage theft, right? Okay. So you pay less than minimum wage. Yep. You pay less than what was agreed to, including commissions, piece rates, and all regular wages. Yep. They take your tips. Oh. Uh, they don't pay you overtime. They don't pay you for split shifts. They don't pay any promised vacations or bonuses. They don't pay final wages in a timely manner. Oof. That's a state regulation. You already know. Deny meal breaks, state. rest breaks, prevent you from having those cool down breaks for those that are, that are eligible for those. They don't allow you to accrue or use sick leave. They, they take unauthorized deductions from your check. They, they bounce paychecks. Wow. wow. And they don't reimburse for work expenses. I feel like we got to do a whole nother episode on wage theft because I have <laughs> so many things to say I know about you those things, right? Wow, bro. For rate. Hold on. I'm going to write it down. We're going to do wage theft. Okay. Wage theft. Thank you for sharing all that stuff. These are all the things that you have to be. This is why we do the show. This is everything Walt just ran through is this why we want. Not only the employees to know, of course, but also the payroll people. So you can understand the flip side. People are getting robbed. Wow, man. Thank you, bro. Yes, sir. All right. Mine is a... And we're ready to move, right? That was good. Okay, cool. Mine is, again, we always in the same vein. This one, I, this time I was intentional. I was like, all right, what are we doing? Let me look, right? And I found... Yeah. And I did deductions. But what I found was overpayments and the relationship to deductions because mm. that is often the situation and a group of workers in houston started experiencing these deductions that were like hefty like up to 300 dollars each in the paycheck mm. and they were like whoa where's this coming from come to find out that they had they were overpaid and these deductions were started without it seems like in the article without acknowledgement, without mm. the thing, and they started taking the money out of their check. And it was like, whoa, wait. Now, I believe it because Texas doesn't, we don't pay income tax in Texas. So mm -hmm. they don't have a governing body that it makes it employee centric. They're not protecting, not, they're not protecting, but they don't have that extra layer of ad advocacy for the employees. So I could see this happening where company was just, <sighs> no communication they overpaid they realized the overpay and they were like oh i'm taking it back other states this is what we're calling out folks with these deduction type things state by state as we go along other states regulate that and say hey you can take it back but you need to give them communication notification other states, you say you you can take it back, but you need their written consent and approval before you take it back. In some states, there's even like a timeline or a time yeah. range. Oh yes, I remember that. that you have. Oh my gosh! In order to yes. take those deductions, right? Yes. So, and we talked about on talked about this on that on this show the timeline. I remember you covering that, bro. That was amazing. So all these different factors play in. Right. And that's the to, that's those are the things. Those are the gems. That's the free game that you, we want to share. To, we, we want you to make. And guess what? It's already there. Right. We're just trying to make it apparent. It's already on your state websites. We're getting the information from good resources. We do this for a living. We have to be sure about our resources. So please believe like these things are the these are the little gems that we want people to know. 
deductions are a state by state thing. Some states are more protective than others. Mm-hmm. No, know where you stand. I'm not saying don't live there. It is what it is. Home is home, but know where you stand. Know how it is. So yep. yeah, yep. that was my stuff, man. You right? We yep. killed it. We killing it. All right, let's pay the bills, man. Let's pay some sure. bills. All, All right. right. Shout out to Time Track Go. They keep doing their thing. It's a great system. It's a free freestyle a little bit. They have a great system. All right. Check them out. They have introduced an innovative new feature designed to simplify time tracking for both exempt and non-exempt, meaning hourly and salaried employees. Okay. Mm-hmm. This feature aligns with the recent changes in, in, in the FLSA regarding the new salaried employee rules. Yeah, so by automatically calculating those standard 40-hour work weeks and accurately, key point, accurately determining overtime when necessary, Time Track Go ensures precise employee time while also maintaining those accurate PTO balances, which we all know is important. You want to make sure your PTO is accurate and correct. Make sure my money's right. Yep. Additionally, the system can identify those instances where non-exempt employees may have reached, may not have reached, correction, the 40-hour threshold. So to, to learn more, please contact Contract Go at 888-321-9922, or you can go visit www.timetrackgo.com. That's T-I-M-E-T-R-A-K-Go.com. Let's go. Let's go. We got to tell them to make a dance because the T-I-N-E. They can make yeah. a dance to it. They can do, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They got make no, a little, little a creepy clock icon like a, oh my, oh, from a wooden Loki. Clock. Oh, from Loki. Loki. <laughs> oh, yes. And then incorporate the wooden clock thing. Yeah. Check out the episode with Time Track Go. We literally yeah. talk about a wooden time clock, folks. Okay. It's amazing. Yeah. I like it. I love it, man. I love it. All right, let's get into it because I have not said today we are talking about deductions in Cali. We did talk Mm -hmm. about deductions, but we didn't specify. We're talking about deductions in Cali and what's good to know. So Walt's going to start us off and I'll finish it up. How are we doing on time? All right, we're doing good. good. Yeah, so I just have a couple of key things to talk about for employees and employers. You can jump in there anytime and add any thoughts that you want, Brian. Um, so for the employers or the payroll or HR professionals, you want to make sure that you're withholding any mandatory, uh, deductions that might be like income tax, state income tax, social security, Medicare, FICA, that stuff, state disability insurance, SDI, any local jurisdiction requirements. You want to make sure you're adhering to those, any voluntary deductions that the employee may have authorized and elected. You want to make sure that you're processing those accordingly, wage garnishments, everything. And you want to make sure that you're compliant. You want to make sure that you are providing itemized wage statements. And you also want to make sure that as a, an employer or a payroll professional or HR professional, that you're not deducting um, for business losses or breakage, right? You can't not do that. You can't and deduct from a... Uh, they try to take that from people's checks. Yeah, <laughs> some people might, yeah. Yep. And, that, and it's illegal? They don't they can't do that? Yeah, that's what it says in California. Ooh. Mm-hmm. That's all see what I'm saying? Thanks, bro. Good yeah. free game. Yeah, employees, yeah. so keep that in mind. Yeah, so written authorization is required for most voluntary deductions. So you want to know that as the employer and the employee. And as the employer or professional, you want to maintain accurate records for at least four years. So if there's an audit and somebody says, hey, I want to see the authorization or the written authorization from this employee years ago, you better have it in your records. Oof. As we said, comply or fry. Ooh, comply so, or fry. Yep. So time restrictions on final paycheck deductions and final pays, you want to make sure you're adhering to those as well. So for the employee, you want to make sure that you know your rights. You're, which you're protected against, but you're protected against illegal deductions. So the employers cannot deduct for their cash shortages, like we mentioned, right. uh, unless proven deliberate. So if if the employee is responsible for a cash shortage, then oh, so say hey, you were doing your register and like ten bucks are are gone from what we should have taken in, then they're saying like if if it was deliberate by the employee, then they can deduct it. So I guess if the employee, well, they got to prove that though. Yeah. Okay. 
So I said, yeah, yeah. proven. I said, proven deliberate. Because you can't be like, your till is short. Give me ten dollars. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> so you can't. You cannot be deducted for a broken or lost equipment. Um, there are some exceptions with this, but uniform cost. You want to do your research on that. There are some uniform costs. Yeah, all this stuff. Double check, please. Um, business losses, as I said earlier. Then you want to know that some required documentation is needed. You want to make sure that you receive an itemized pay statement of what's going on. You don't want to just get a pay statement that doesn't have anything. Says, "Hey, this is just your net pay. You worked eighty hours, and this is your gross pay, and this is your net pay." They're saying like. Where are the taxes? Where are the deductions? What am I paying into? You know what I'm saying? You want to make sure that you inspect your, your own payroll records. You want to uh, make sure that you have written notice for any change in your deductions. Your pay, your payroll pro or your HR pro cannot just go and change your record without your uh, consent. But you want to make sure that... What's up? In Cali, you can't say what? Yeah, it, says, it, says, that. it says written notice is required for changes in deductions. For changes and deduct. Oh, okay. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I got scared. I'm like, wait a minute. I got to make updates. To, I got to make updates here and there. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get written for everything. No, you, you want to make sure that you're understanding what's mandatory, right? So it's good for you as the employee to educate yourself on what's mandatory. That's again, like I mentioned, those taxes, uh, the local taxes that you're responsible for, Social Security and Medicare, if you're uh, required that because you may be on a visa or some type of student that may not that may be exempt from paying FICA. So you want to know about that as well. Um, you want to know about pre-tax and post-tax deductions, and you want to know what you can do, who you can contact, right? So if you want to file a complaint, you got <laughs> yeah, you should contact your labor, <laughs> your local labor commissioner's office. And oh. um, but and also know in the state of California there is a three year statute of limitations on oh. filing a complaint. So do it in real time. Don't wait four years. Like, oh, what are man. You like, for? Oh. <laughs> Ten years later. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna sue these guys. Yeah. <laughs> look and, and look that that's why it's important as the employee to if you're listening to this to educate yourself and know what's going on. And then lastly, you want to know that you're protected against retaliation if you do file a complaint yeah for sure yeah that's a tough one right there mm-hmm. yep that's it that's all i got man. I, I feel like when and thank you for that that was awesome like i i, it, I had five other show ideas just <laughs> off of the things that you were saying all right that's cool that's awesome, bro. Let me, <laughs> so you're, yeah. my, your wheels are spinning. Oh, you're like, oh, I want to talk about this. I want to talk about that. Yes. So many, I'm, but I'm writing it down. So we're good. Yeah. We're good, folks. Yeah, I'm not paying attention. Ooh, that little idea that I just had. I was like, oh, how cool would it be if like, I could type and overlay on our stuff in real time? Yeah, that'd be cool. Because I can show the show folks that watch on YouTube the thoughts that it's spurring payroll-wise yeah. and paycheck-wise yeah, cool. for employees, right? That would be dope. Yeah. Anywho, it'll come. It'll come. We're almost there. Mine is a lot. Some of the same stuff reframe, though, toward mm-hmm. the employee. This is I'm talking to the employees now, and I want to tell you about what's allowed. Right. Let's just make it really easy. Sum it up. What is allowed in the deductions and what's prohibited in the deductions in the state of California? OK. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I, I like about the research and i love about all of our research really it just again makes us better so i have a, such a cheat code with mm-hmm. our what we do I, I wanted to know what it meant like hey who's covered in this who has to abide by the rules right because if you're an employee this only applies to you if you work for a private company a private employer okay and we're going to get to whatever a private employer meant at the end of this because i was like what's a private employer it's mm-hmm. the curiosity things it's the that's how you need to be not only as an employee, but as a, as a, an, or how can I say someone about their paycheck, be curious about everything on there. It's your money. So anywho, employers mm-hmm. can make, can only make the specific types of deductions from employee wages, such as legal deductions. So anything required by state or federal law, taxes, state taxes, if you live in that state, that type of thing. Okay. Employee approved deductions, if you signed off in writing on these deductions, it can be taken from your 
pay because you are proving it. Like, it could be careful what you're signing to because you could be signing off on stupid ish. And you're like, wait, what? Whoa, you see it come out of your yep. check and you're like, whoa, wait a minute. So be careful, especially if you're getting a job. Read the, oh my gosh, mm-hmm. read the handbook. Yep. Employee approved deductions if you wish to sign off in writing. Okay. And then also these things can include insurance premiums and hospital dues. What I want to say about insurance premiums, benefits, and things, this mm-hmm. is why, folks, I, and I just connected the dot. This is why we do open enrollment for companies. You're signing to this. You are mm-hmm. signing to, I want to take benefits out of my thing. I want to take this stuff out of my check. Okay. So, it's and there's a lot of regulations around that. We could do a whole nother show on mm-hmm. that type of thing in deductions and benefits, and maybe we should probably yeah. like in January when open enrollment is done and when people start feeling their check, like, wait a minute, <gasps> I did oh my gosh, I picked medical dental vision, I picked everything. I was happy that day mm-hmm. and I was so mm-hmm. ambitious. Like, and now it hits your check and you're like, Oh, I want it all. Anywho, yep. you're signing to it. Okay. Union agreements. If you're in a union, they're dues. That was one of the articles that I came across in prepping for the show. Was a you? I pick. It was like, oh wait, do I want this union one or do I want this Houston one? I want the Houston one better. But it was a union thing, and they were fighting about the dues. And then was it good or not? Was it legit or not? But when you get into a union, you're signing to this. So these are the things that you have. Hey, wait, union dues. Is it coming out of my check or is it covered a hundred? You know what I mean? You want to yep. understand because that impacts your money. Tardiness. Yep. If you're late by less than 30 minutes, employers can, duck, can deduct up to a half hour of wages. Whoa. For longer days, they can deduct based on the exact time lost. So I inherently knew this, but I didn't. It, they're calling it out separate, and it makes it more, ooh, yeah, that, that's true. Yep. So think about that. It's, if you're late by less than 30 minutes, employers can deduct up to the full 30 minutes. You're late yep. 20, but I'm deducting 30. Now, I would warn warn against check that in your state i'm sure that is a state by state variance mm-hmm. so look in look that up unreturned uniforms and equipment if you don't return company pro- property and company provided items and you agree to it in writing when you signed on in the beginning when you got the job employers can deduct the cost of those things from your pay right it all comes back to that employee handbook. We got we to gotta keep reiterating how important it is to understand what you're signing when you're getting the job. All yep. these things can impact your pay. So these are allowed deductions, right? Okay, mm-hmm. here's the ones that you're protected against in California. Hey, this is prohibited. Job-related exams, course for pre-employment, pre-employment physicals or medical exams cannot be deducted. Credit card tip fees, the deduction to process the credit card, that cannot be deducted. That's awesome to know because I'm Mm -hmm. sure they get petty wop out there with that. Cash or equipment losses, like you were talking about the spillage, right? Deductions for lost cash or broken equipment are prohibited unless it's proven you acted in dishonesty or with severe carelessness. Okay, fair. Well, right? Yeah. Commission overpayments. If you receive excess commission in advance, employers can't deduct unless you agree to repay it. Look at that. What? <laughs> so I, I, I want to go back to what to line number three about the last sentence in there. It uh-huh. says, un- unless it's proven you acted dishonestly yep. or with or severe s- carelessness. carelessness. Yeah. What is severe? carelessness and what is dishonest so what i thought about right away was like they had you on camera mm-hmm. grabbing a meat slicer and being like bong, bong. maybe even they got you on audio f this job you know what i mean that is severe carelessness and so, dishonesty so so what if you have a meat slicer and you're picking it up to clean and you look away and you're laughing at what your co-workers and then you drop it so, or something again I'm hoping things are on camera, right? Because okay. then that'll be hard to. I'm a, if we're assuming it's on camera, I would hope that the employer, maybe there's an in between. Maybe it's, hey, you were a little careless. Look, if they're yeah. allowed, but this is prohibited. They can't take it without your approval, your agreement anyway in California. Yeah. So these are, the, it's a great, it, but that's a great call out because those are the things you want to understand state yeah. by state. What I thought you were going to say was on, on the next item four, how it, 
calls out only commission overpayment. So that's interesting. Yeah. What do you mean? Wait, regular overpayments, what then? Again, these are the little things that you got to be aware of in the states you live in. And then the last one is prohibited. Again, these are prohibited relocation costs. Employers can't deduct costs for moving you to the U.S. So if they choose and they offer you that, hey, mm -hmm. it's covered, they can't now turn around and deduct it from you. See how I did you that favor. Right. <laughs> now it's time for some get back. <laughs> you so stupid, bro. <laughs> but see, exactly right. This is a yeah. great reason to know what state, what's going on in your state. You yeah. know what I mean? How do mm -hmm. these things apply? And man, folks, we just hope there's so many times I was just talking to a neighbor and he was like, squeaky wheel gets the oil. And I was like, yes, absolutely right. The squeaky wheel gets the oil. And I think I had to explain that to somebody recently. They were like, what does that mean? And I'm like, squeaky wheel gets the oil, right? Like, we mm -hmm. get it. We already know. Yep. You, you know, you speak up enough, you're going to get something addressed. So, yeah, you know, you, and Wall says all the time, we might be the one person that had the courage to Good. set off that snowball effect and that tidal wave effect where you mm -hmm. change the whole thing. Like you just literally change the whole game for everybody else. Yep. Because you, one person was courageous enough to be like, hey, this is wrong in my check, folks. Yep. You know what I mean? If we right, right. Hey, if we gave you that little nugget to be like, what? That just happened to me. Let me go mm -hmm. look up what they're talking about. And you find out, oh snap, this is not right. Yeah. This is you guys are doing me wrong. Where's my money? Mm -hmm. Or and then at the very least, they should explain it because there are exceptions to everything. Yep. They're, sorry, my dog. Yeah. Let them bark. They're except, okay. Yeah, there are exceptions to everything. So keep yeah. that in mind. And there are penalties if folks really quick before we get out of here. There are penalties in California. Violating certain rules like deducting the cost of pre-employment exams is a misdemeanor offense in California. This mm. guide can help employees in California stay informed about what can and can't be deducted from their paycheck. Like yep. this, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to guide folks. So hopefully you get a little gym. Let's see. Oh, so in California, I promise to define it real quick. In California, private employers, because this all applies only to private employers, mm -hmm. refer to businesses or organizations that are privately owned as opposed to public employers, which are government entities or agencies. So private employers... Include companies, corporations, partnerships, non-for-profits, and other privately held businesses operating for profit or non-for-profit. So if it's not government, it's a private business pretty much, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's if you basically you work for a private business. If you don't work for the government, these rules apply. Yep. And that is it, folks. How do we do on time? Not we got bad. the safe talk question, oh, man. Not the safe talk. Should get workers, gig workers, gig workers <laughs> receive the same payroll deduction protections and benefits as traditional employees? And how would this impact California's economy and workforce innovation? So they don't. No, because it could because well, gig workers are considered independent. Ten ninety nine is that what you're saying? Gig workers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't think. Yeah, no. And see, the good thing in Cali, they are again very employee centric. Mm -hmm. So you can't really, if you're a gig worker, you really are a gig worker. Yep. You're a contractor. You're a private contractor. I think gig worker downplays the. Yeah. I don't know what the sophistication of you have to be a, a, a little bit more savvy. You got to do a little bit more on your running. You, if you're 1099. You're like operating a business. Yeah. Right? Look, and look, there are still some protections that they have. They may not I have all the protections. It, especially as the, in Cali. In the, yeah. As the employees, you, you generally cannot deduct from an independent contractor's payment for damages unless there is a clear um, con contractual agreement wow. allowing for that. Okay. So say that you have a contractor doing something or building something, they break something by mistake, but if it's not written out like, hey, you have to pay us back or we'll deduct from your payment for any damages, right? you can't really deduct from them. And now is that everywhere or just in Cali? This is for California. Okay. Yeah. I believe it. Yeah. They, look, I love it, man. I really respect Cali for that protection, for their employee centricity. Yep. Word of the day, centricity. <laughs> so, yeah, look, it, it, 
and I think this is a state by state thing, but just again, general mm-hmm. opinion is they should have some protections, but you are, I feel like in the 1099 world, you are your own business. Mm-hmm. You're taking a risk. You got to protect yourself. I think that's what they say. Hey, that saying, Hey, you're 1099 and you don't pay your taxes up front because you are taking a risk that you need to protect yourself from. Mm-hmm. And we'll settle up at the end of the year. Yep. So I think you got to take the good with the bad. That's why it's a risky thing. But some some moderate protections should be in place for the workforce period. And contractors are absolutely the workforce. Businesses are part of the workforce. This is why some states are tax friendly for businesses to come. And man, I love it, bro. I got to start taking notes down of the show ideas as we kind of go along because it's so many things and not get distracted. So that's that helps keep us in that 30 minute. <laughs> that we don't, I don't put a whole segment in the show for no reason. Whoa, wait a minute. He's, he's just opening a whole tangent. We both do it, man. We can, no doubt. We can not anymore. We can talk forever. <laughs> not anymore. Look, we're only four minutes over. Well, know? not really, because we, we, we started recording for a little bit and we were still chit chatting before oh. we get in. So we're not even, oh, come on now. We yeah. are efficient, folks. <laughs> we delivering the product. We're machine. We're machine. <laughs> we're AI Getting augmented. It. Yes. I'm at, oh my gosh. gosh. All right, man. I'm going to go get these games. I enjoy, brother. And yes, you too, man. Folks, thank you. We love you. Till the next time. All right. Go Peace. vote. Peace. Yeah, go vote. Hope you voted. Before we sign off, here are a couple quick things. Don't forget to follow It's About Payroll on LinkedIn and It's About Your Paycheck on Facebook and TikTok. Thank you for being part of our payroll community and thank you for being a part of this journey with us. Until the next time, keep learning, keep growing, and most importantly, keep going.